Welcome to worship this morning. It's great to see everyone here. We are celebrating our uh, Reconciled in Christ Sunday today, and this is a Reconciled in Christ Church, and we're very proud of that, and we welcome everyone who are here, and we welcome those who are joining us uh, on, the, on the web who are participating through our live stream. Uh, we have a very exciting uh, day today because this is the first day that Pastor Elise is with us. So let's introduce her. Pastor Elise, where are you? Come on up. <laughs> oh, good morning. Good morning. I might need a bigger block to <laughs> see him. There you go. I need to look authoritative over <laughs> here. <laughs> I'm, I just wanted to say, I don't have anything prepared, but I'm so thrilled um, to be with you and to be taking a big leap of faith together uh, for the renewal and the re-energizing of this place. And the, any, everyone I've met so far has been fabulous, salt of the earth people, hardworking. So it's a dream congregation to be coming into, and Fred already feels very welcome, my three-year-old. He's in the nursery. Um, he's small and blonde, and if you see a little boy trying to make a break for it, that's him, so feel free to grab him and not let him go, but I do feel a little bit like Mary on my way to Bethlehem, except that there is room in the inn. <laughs> for me and, and my new baby coming in June. So we're having another little boy, lots of new life, lots of excitement. So I'm happy to get to work and get to know you and getting to love you will be great. So thank you. And now we'll continue with our lighting of the peace candle. Let us pray. Lord God, today we celebrate that we are reconciled to God through your love and that this love is for all people. We pray for those who are divided from one another through strife or other things that keep us apart. But united in your love, help us to work for peace. We pray for those places that are experiencing particular evil and stress and division, especially the Ukraine. And help us to show your love to the world, the love that we know through you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Transfiguration Lutheran Church welcomes all who seek to experience the joy of God's love and grace. We welcome all because God welcomes all. People of every race, culture, sexual orientation, gender identity, and relation status. Our unity is in Christ. All are welcome here. For those who are able, please stand. We worship as we live in the name of God the Triune, Creator, Savior, and Spirit. Amen. Please join in hymn number 641.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Please be seated. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who looks upon us in compassion, forgives our sin, and heals our lives. Amen. Let us acknowledge before God and one another our need for repentance and God's mercy. Lord, we have sinned. In your compassion, cleanse us from all our sin and take away our guilt. Create in us a new heart and give us a steadfast spirit. Do not cast us away, but fill us with your Holy Spirit and restore your joy within us. Amen. Hear the good news of God's forgiveness. As tender as parent to child, so deep is God's compassion for you. As high as heaven above the earth, so vast is God's love for you. As far as the east is from the west, as far God removes your sin from you. Renewing your life through Jesus Christ, blessed be God who crowns us with mercy and love. Blessed be God forever. Let us pray. O oh God, our strength, the struggle between good and evil rages within and around us, and the devil and all the forces that defy you tempt us with empty promises. Keep us steadfast in your word, and when we fall, raise us again and restore us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Genesis. The Lord is king, let the peoples tremble. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim, let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion, he is exalted over all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name, holy is he. Mighty king, lover of justice, you have established equity, you have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Extol the Lord our God, worship at his footstool. Holy is he. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel also was among those who called his name. They cried to the Lord, and he answered them. He spoke to them in the pillar of cloud. They kept his degrees and the statues that he gave them. O Lord our God, you answered them. You were a forgiving God to them, but an avenger of their wrongdoings. Extol the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. Word of God, word of life. You don't have to stand every time I come up here. That's, that's fine. You're just following the screen. That's good. Uh, I'm preaching on the Old Testament lesson from Genesis. The, the one that Jane read was from Psalm, the Psalms. So I want to get this text before you. Otherwise, you won't know what I'm talking about. So 
Here we go. From Genesis 2, beginning with the 15th verse and continuing with chapter 3, 1 through 7. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat it, you shall die. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for them. The, God, the word of the Lord. Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by the every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, all these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him and suddenly the angels came and waited on him. The gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Have you ever heard the saying, a little knowledge is dangerous? Or when asked how to fix something like a plumbing or electricity or maybe the copy machine, you reply, I know just enough to be dangerous. A little knowledge, it turns out, might be worse than any knowledge at all, for it gives you a false confidence that you might be better at something than you really are. And this can be dangerous. I think that might describe the situation we have before us in our first reading from the second and third chapters of Genesis. The first humans get the knowledge of good and evil, but not fully. It turns out when they ate the fruit, they were not like God. Their understanding of good and evil fell way short of God's, and that was just a little dangerous. 
So let's look a little closer at the story. First, the setup. God creates the first human out of the dust of the earth. We call that human Adam, but the name comes from the original Hebrew, the language used in the first telling of this story. It's actually a kind of pun, you see. The Hebrew word for dust or dirt is Adama. And so the man, Adam, is created from the Adama, or the Adam is created from the Adama. We get close to this pun by saying the human was made from the humus. Humus being another name, or hummus being another name for dirt or compost. So to remind us of this, I will call Adam the first human, and Eve, as we've come to know her, the second human. So after creating this human being, God sets that first human in the garden and says, the human may eat of any fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the human must not eat. For to eat it will bring immediate death. Then we skip a few verses and go to chapter 3. And in the rest of chapter 2, another human is created out of the rib of the first human. The story is clear. The second human is exactly the same as the first. That is equal. Bone of Adam's bone, made of the same essence, one flesh. And at this point, they didn't know each other as different as gendered. So it's no he said, she said in this story. This, in fact, they're both present when the serpent talks, the serpent also created by God. And now the text tells us this serpent was a crafty creature, not always wholly reliable, it seems. The serpent twists the truth, just puts it a little off kilter. The best lies contain just a little bit of truth in them. And just to get the humans to want to eat that forbidden fruit, he says, did God, did God say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the second human says, now speaking for both of them, the first human just stands there silently, apparently. That first human says, not any tree, just this one tree. If we eat of it, we will die. You will not die, the serpent says. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Wait a minute. How does this serpent know? He doesn't. He's telling a lie or saying something about something he actually knows nothing about. He speaks for God, for goodness sake. He claims to know what God knows. Whenever someone says they know what God knows, it ought to set off some alarms. We might just want to be a little skeptical. But the humans take the bait, both of them, for they're both standing right there, according to the text. Adam heard the whole thing and came to the same conclusions. They were one, after all. Two sides of a coin, bone of bone, one flesh. So they both ate, and their eyes were opened, and they suddenly knew. What was their first revelation? That they were different, that they were gendered. And that, with that knowledge, came shame. Naked, they could see the differences. So they covered them up with clothes. A little knowledge is dangerous, you see. To eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil did not give the humans complete knowledge of good and evil. The serpent, you'll remember, twisted the truth. He lied. He said, you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Well, half that statement was true, yes, they will know good and evil, but not completely, as God knows good and evil. They will know it in a limited way, in a human way, partially, with limited perspective, bias, prone to prejudice, not like God at all. As Paul says, there will be a time when we see God face to face and know fully. But for now, we see through a glass darkly. 
We just have a glimpse of what God knows. Only after knowledge of good and evil does the second human get a name. It's Eve, the mother of all the living. With the knowledge of good and evil comes knowledge of gender, of difference, of shame. Is gender good? Is difference evil? Is shame good or evil? I'm sure you agree. It depends. You see, once you know good and evil, once you see it, you understand that things can be good and the same things can be evil. Things can be both good and evil. Having knowledge of good and evil means you have to decide in every situation that you encounter, you have to discern which is which. That's the burden that Adam and Eve gave us. Luckily, God gave us each other. In some ways, this newfound shared power and knowledge brings us together, creates community. For alone, it's hard to decide, impossible even, given the limitations of one human being. But collectively, we might have a chance of at least approximately approximating what is good and evil. We also have the wisdom of the ages to depend on, wisdom of all the sciences, of all philosophy, of the Bible, for goodness sake. Thousands, millions of perspectives on good and evil. Years and years of wisdom. We listen to them all. And by doing so, come to a greater knowledge, come closer to the truth about good and evil. And this knowledge is progressive. It adds on to itself so that it gets greater and greater and maybe better and better and perhaps closer and closer to the truth. We've been on this journey of knowledge about accepting LGBTQ plus people into the church, to accept people who have transitioned their gender, men who love men, women who love women, those who are questioning, those who are gender fluid. It was not long, that long ago that society was certain those things were evil. There were laws against it. There are still some laws in place. Even today, some want to make discussion with teens about gender transition illegal. A doctor might be barred from helping a youth in transition. A psychologist or teacher banned from speaking to that child about their gender identity. This is an evil that must be resisted. Our knowledge of good and evil on this subject has progressed. Thanks be to God. How much richer is our community because we have come to know LGBTQ individuals to be just like everyone else. They contain good and evil like every human being. How dangerous is it to shame those who might not conform to society's limited understanding of good and evil, especially those who are transitioning their gender or those who are gender questioning, non-binary. Many young people have died by suicide, having no one to understand them, no one to support them. It shall not be so among you, for you are a reconciled in Christ congregation. You can be there to support these questioning children and love them through their transitions. I want to share my personal journey of a coming to a different understanding of these issues, my growing knowledge, if you will. I grew up in a time when the binary view of gender prevailed. It wasn't even questioned. By the time I was a young pastor, we had made some progress on homosexuality, and I understood it as mostly biologically determined, not so much a choice. Still a binary view, men like men, women like women, all should have the same rights. Then my dear daughter, Miriam, who is now a pastor in the LCA, came out as bisexual. She fell in love with a woman in her senior year in college. She had only dated men up to that point, and frankly, we didn't see it coming. 
and now she's married to a man, so she's loved both men, a man and a woman, men and women. But when she fell in love with a woman, our neat binary world was suddenly thrown into question. Is this good? Is this bad or evil? Thanks to Adam and Eve, we had to decide. Luckily, we had a patient daughter who helped us to understand it was the person she loved, the gender was not important to her. So bisexuality introduced an idea we thought we had resolved. Is sexuality actually a choice? No, we thought. It's biologically determined, at least homosexuality anyway. Now we have to struggle with a new truth. There is this continuum that includes ambiguity, no black and white, binary, bisexuality. About the same time, our son Isaac came out as gay. He too had had a serious girlfriend in high school, so we again had a period of adjustment. He left for college and we assumed he was dating men. Well, he came to understand that he was also bisexual and has since dated both genders. So much for our neat binary world. We saw all kinds of complications, not evil necessarily, but problems that they might run into, not to mention the grief and limitations that society would put on them for their own choices. Then Isaac began to speak of himself as gender fluid, identifying parts of himself as female, others as male. It was a continuum, he said. Another binary bites the dust. I've had another bout then, since then, of cognitive dissonance when Isaac began to date Faith, who identifies as non-binary and goes by they, them pronouns. Isaac also sometimes uses they and them because he recognizes himself as gender fluid. Now, I understood transitioning from a man to a woman or a woman to a man, but gender non-binary? More ambiguity, no more binary man and woman. Is this good? Is this evil? Again, my patient children and Isaac's dear partner, Faith, have helped me to gain greater insight into this. My knowledge has grown. My empathy and love for Faith has made the grammatically challenging youth use of they, them pronouns much easier. And I am getting better, though not perfect. I desire to honor them and their personhood, their self-understanding, which reveals to me a truth about gender, a truth about gender fluidity. It's neither good nor evil. It's human. Since the first humans took the bite of the fruit we have struggled with this knowledge of good and evil, struggled to get it right. The full truth is finally hitting, hidden from us. We see only in part. Only God sees the whole. But God has also revealed to us the truth about good and evil in the person of Jesus Christ, who overcame evil with love for Jesus, those whom society called evil, he called loved. And those who society called good, well, he pointed out their evil side and loved them also. Jesus died for all the sins of the world. Jesus forgave those who did evil to him by nailing him on the cross. If we have questions about good and evil, we only need to look to Jesus. Jesus came to reveal good and evil and to overcome evil with love. And so we who follow Jesus also love as we've been loved, accept as we've been accepted, care as we've been cared for. Jesus loves us even though we're this crazy mixture of good and evil because we're human we're God's children. 
Reconciled in Christ, we love all those who come through these doors, all whom we meet on the way. Maybe for my, that first sin actually has given us some benefits. It is good to know good and evil, but it is greater to know love. Amen. Please stand. Now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Siblings in Christ, as we affirm our commitment to be a reconciling in Christ congregation, let us join our hearts and voices in prayer. Good and gracious God, you have created each and every one of us in your image. 
in the image of your boundless, never-failing never love, and you call each of us to reflect that same love in our lives for the sake of this world you so deeply love. In this world where many things divide your people, help us to be of the same mind and to have the same love as Christ. Merciful God, in this world where so many look to their own interests, teach us to make your church a haven for all who've been hurt. In a world where people are placed in the margins, help us to create a community where all are centered by your love. Merciful God, as Christ poured himself out to reconcile us with you and with our neighbors, so let us pour ourselves out so that others may be reconciled to you and to each other. In a world where some have and some do not, help us to live out the equality we have in Christ Jesus. Merciful God, renew the nations, O oh God. Give voice to those on the margins and resolve to world leaders how to seek to protect those most vulnerable. Loosen the bonds of injustice and bring to an end all violence, oppression, and persecution. Merciful God. May we be filled with courage and compassion to confront the challenges of each day and grant us faith and fortitude to continue in the way of Christ, the way of reconciling love all of our days. In times of trouble, trauma, or illness, Surround your people with steadfast love. Merciful God, you alone are God. We praise you for the faithful departed in every age. Be with those who are close to us in death. Unite our prayers with theirs until our wilderness journey is complete. Merciful God, let us pray for Dave Merrill, Jerry Hansen, Jean Nyberg, Ron Schultz, Ray Jones, Judy Koppelman, Megan Swanson, Dave Dixon, Evan Stevens, Will, Becky, and Madeline Dunwoody, Terry Bonneritz, Jan Weber, Carol Patterson, Dolly Anderson, Deanna Jurgens, Pat Kilb, Bonnie Norby, and Rick Zeidler. Serving in the military, Jer Jamie Lindman, Derek Davis, Tia Juan Scott, and James Gunderson. Missionaries, Irene Ammon, Steve Bethany Freiberg, and Philip Nushin. We'd also like to offer, offer prayers of sympathy for Roy Singer, Brandy, and Chad Davis, and sons Dalton, Derek, and Dylan and Jason and Jill Singer and sons Isaac, Elijah, and Ethan on the death of wife, mother, and grandmother, Robin Singer. Siblings in Christ, as we affirm our commitment to, the, to be a reconciling congregation, we lift our voices to God. Accept these prayers, gracious God, and those known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share the peace with one another. God's peace to you. Hold on, I gotta turn this off. I don't want.
Again, we welcome our online audience and invite you to participate in the offering by going online to the website to give. And we are grateful to those present here and those online for your great generosity and support of this ministry. It is an exciting time, and we're excited for the future. So we thank you for generously supporting that.
Please stand if you're able. Let us pray. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for all of creation. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need through Jesus Christ, who sets the table for all. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Christ dwells with us here. All who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come. We invite our online audience to gather the elements that they have, and this is the body of Christ given for you, and the blood of Christ is shed for you. The rest who are here can come forward with the instructions of the ushers. Would the communion assistants please come?
Those who are able, please stand. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, that you have strengthened our hearts through this feast of life and salvation. Shine the light of Christ on our path, that we may do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with our um, and forever. Amen. I'm going to do the benediction while you're standing, and we'll do announcements. God, the source of life and goodness, God, the word of truth and grace, God, the spirit of mercy and peace, bless you all, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Got to mix it up as the interim bridge pastor, you know. Keep you guessing. What's that? Fluid, gender fluid. Ugh. Don't have my hearing aids in. So, Yes, we're fluid. So with that in mind, I forgot the announcements in my office. So <laughs> we're going we're gonna, to uh, depend on collective wisdom here. Let's start with today. There's a uh, reception following uh, today for Transfiguration Sunday, chance to meet Pastor Elise, and talk with her. Then this coming Wednesday is our first midweek Lenten service, besides our Ash Wednesday. And it's one of those that we're going to be doing a soup supper. So come at 5.30 for a soup supper. Worship begins at 6.30. We're using a liturgy that Pastor Elise and her husband have written. So it's very, very exciting. Uh, worship will be only a half hour. Oh, yeah, sign up. Thank you collective wisdom. Sign up, please, for it's the 1st and the 15th that we'll be doing um, these soup suppers during midweek Lenten. What else was I going to say? I better come up, yeah? Yes, yes. Exodus Bible study will be happening today, uh, so we're thankful for Pastor Paul for leading that following service. What were we to say, Elise, about what a slug of announcements. Do you know when your installation is yet? Or? Oh, yeah. Okay, that's important. Okay, so next week, March 5th, will be Pastor Lee's installation, and uh, the bishop's office will send a representative for that, and it'll be my last Sunday, so kind of hello, goodbye. So, <laughs> thanks. It's been fun to be here. And as many of you may know, uh, Pastor Elise is an old friend. Uh, she was my wife's intern at Good Shepherd, and then she went away, and then she came back to sh serve Good Shepherd, my, where my wife served. My wife had left by then, but um, 
So we've known her, and even before little Freddie came along. So, and now another one. So uh, there was one other one that was super important, but yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. Great, I think that, that pretty much covers that. All right. And our op closing Have some candy. <laughs>